Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, 1 Kings chapter 18. If you'd like me to come speak at your church or if you have any questions, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. So we ended 1 Kings 17. And it said, Elijah took a child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. So this lady helped Elijah. It turned out that her son got really sick and died. Elijah prayed, and the son came back to life again. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art the man of God, and that the word of the Lord is the mouth is true. It also said down in verse 3, God told Elijah to leave this area because the king wanted to destroy him. It says, Get thee hence and turn by eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink the drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. And we talked in the last chapter how the ravens don't really like to share their food with people. So Elijah was hiding from the king because the king was trying to destroy him, and God provided for him. Starting with uh, First Kings 18 with verse 1. It says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself to Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself to Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. So God told Elijah to hide, get away from this king. And now God's telling him, Go ahead, go talk to the king and show himself and tell him, I'm going to bring the rain back. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them by a fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. So Obadiah was this governor of this horrible king. He loved God. He loved God so much that he took some of uh, God's prophets and hid them in a cave so that way they wouldn't die. And he fed and gave them water. And Ahab said to Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all the fountains of water, and to all the brooks. Peradventure we may find grass to feed the horses and mules alive, that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass through it. And Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. So this king has a brilliant plan. He's like, let's go find any water we could possibly find. Bring it back. We'll, we'll, we'll water the land, and that way we can maybe get some grass for our animals to eat. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and he fell on his face, and he said, Art thou the, my lord Elijah? And he answered him and said, Go and tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. So Obadiah, who you know, fears the lord and knows who Elijah is, finally sees Elijah, and Elijah says, Go tell the king I'm here. Now Elijah probably, I'm sorry, Obadiah is probably scared to hear that because he knows that his king wants to destroy Elijah. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant unto the hand of Ahab to slay me? The Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation nor king whether my Lord has not seen to seek thee. And when they said, He is not here, they took an oath of the kingdom and nation, and they found thee not. So he's saying, My king wants to destroy you, and he's went everywhere to all the kingdoms to find you, to destroy you, and you're telling me to go tell him that you found me and I didn't do anything to you? And now thou sayest, Go tell thy Lord, Behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee whither I, do not, I know not. And so when I come and tell Ahab, he cannot find thee, and he can't slay me, but thou servant for the Lord of thy youth. So Elijah's telling Obadiah, Listen, go tell the Lord I'm here, and then God's going to talk to you later and get you away from there so he can't kill you. Was it not told by the Lord what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord, how I hid a hundred men in the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? Now thou, and now thou sayest, Go tell the Lord, Behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. Obadiah is saying, I, I protected God's prophets. I, I put them in a cave, and I fed them, and gave them water. And now you're telling me just to go tell the king that I found you, and he's going to try to, he's going to try to take me out. And Elijah said, As the Lord of the host liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him that day. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Are, that th are thou he that troubled Israel? 
And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. So Ahab was, up until this point, the worst king in all of all of the, all of Israel. And Ahab said, it's your fault, Elijah, it's your fault that this stuff happened. And Elijah said, it's not my fault that the rain fell. You chose to disobey God. It's your fault. But, of course, Ahab's going to blame somebody else besides himself. So Elijah's telling him, it's your fault. It's your fault that, that, that there was no rain for the last, you know, 30, you know, I think it was three years or something. It's your fault there was no rain. It's your fault that this place is in dire straits. You chose to disobey God. You chose to follow Baal. It's your fault. Now therefore send and gather me all of Israel to Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal 450, and the prophets of the groves 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So he's saying, tell everybody in Israel to go on top of Mount Carmel, and get all the prophets of Baal, who you say is better than my God, and the prophets of the groves, which is 400, so that's 850 people that he says go get them. We're, we're going to see who's really the real God. So Ahab sent to the children of Israel, and they gathered the prophets together into Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long has ye, been, has ye between two opinions? If the, Lord's, if the Lord be your God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. So the people were trying to serve both God and Baal. And Elijah was like, You can't do that. Pick a master and serve him. And so Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, were made a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophet are four hundred and fifty men. Let therefore give them two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it into pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. He's saying, listen, I am one man, just one man. Uh, you have four hundred and fifty men. Let's do a test to see which one's God's better. Take a big ox or bull and put it on top of some wood. Cut it into a bunch of different pieces, you know, so it'll burn easier. And put it on top of an altar here. But don't but don't set it on fire. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. And then call the name of your Lord to call the name of your God. And I will call the name of the Lord. And the God will answer by fire and let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourself, and dress him first, for ye are many, and call the name of your God and put no fire under. He's basically saying, here's the deal. We're going to take this big ox, this big bull, and we're going to put it on this, this altar. You call your God and have him fight fire, and I'm going to call on my God, and we're going to have him put fire on it. And we're going to see which God's better. And he even said, and I'm even going to let you pick the bull you want. I'm going to let you 450 people dress the bull the way you want because I'm just one man. You guys are obviously more than me. We'll see who's better. So Elijah was versus 850 men. You know, sometimes you stand alone. Sometimes you're the only person that stands for God and you're, you're the minority. And they took the bullock which was given them and they dressed it and they called upon the name of Baal from morning until noon saying, O Baal, heal us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered, and they leaped upon the altar which was made. You know, this is the first reference in the world of the first rock music. You know that popular song, Come on, Baal, light my fire. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them, and he said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is on a journey, or he is preventing, he's sleeping, and must be awakened. He's saying, you guys said that your god's better than mine. Come on, maybe you should yell a little louder. He's, he's not, he doesn't hear you right. And they cried aloud, and they cut themselves in a manner of knives and lancets, until blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday was past, and they prophesied till the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any, any regard. So they did all this for a whole day, and nothing happened. They even cut themselves. They yelled louder. Nothing happened. So, you know, Elijah's having fun with this. He's saying, come on, yell louder. Maybe your God can't hear you. And the guys even cut themselves to try to, you know, get their God out there. And Elijah said unto all the people, come near to me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that is broken down. 
And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, and to whom the world come, saying, Israel be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid them on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels of water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and upon the wood. Now you have to understand a couple different things here. Number one, he's saying put water on this bull and on the wood. Well, it's really hard for for wood and, and stuff to catch on fire if it's completely covered in water. So he's making it harder for himself to have this water show up or to have this fire show up. Secondly, this is the middle of the desert. Remember, they've had a drought for many years. So water is going to be something that's going to be almost impossible to come by. So that's two things you have to think about. And then he made a trench around it, so that way the whole entire thing was going to be covered in water, and there was going to be a moat around it with even more water, so that way nothing can happen except it's from God. And Luke 4 says, But I'll tell you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, when the great famine was throughout all the land. Three years and six months, there was no rain. And this guy's saying, not only I'm going to show you how great my God is by dumping four barrels of water on this on this bull, on this ox, and on this uh, wood, but but there was no water anywhere. And I want you to go find all this water. So it's it's like a double fold. And he said, do the second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time, and the water ran around an altar and filled the trench also with water. So he put four, four barrels of water on this sacrifice three separate times. That's, that's, that's 12 barrels of water. It's impossible now for the bull to light and for the wood to light. He wanted to show the people the power of God. So he's dumping all these water on this altar. Remember, it's the middle of the desert. Water's hard to come by. It's even so hard to come by that the king said, yeah, let's go find some water so we can feed our, 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 our grass so that our animals can eat. And it came to pass at the time of the evening, the time of the offering and the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art the God of Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. And that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and thou hast turned away their heart back again. He's saying that I know that you're the God of Israel. I know you're the king here. I know you're the one in control. I'm only a servant, but I want these people to see how powerful you are so they can go back to worshiping you. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw that, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. They saw this fire came from heaven. And they said, How does this be? This guy put all this water on this trench. Not only did the, did the, the altar light, but all the, the, the thing was consumed, the wood was consumed, the stones was consumed, the water around it was consumed. This is proof that Elijah, Elijah's God is right. Imagine fire coming down from heaven to, to for Elijah and the Baal people who the king says you got to worship Baal. Imagine they did nothing, but this one guy was able to talk to God and God listened to him and brought fire from heaven. Can you imagine how scared the people probably were when they saw this? You have 850 people calling out to Baal to light this fire and nothing happened and one measly little man calls out to God and God brings fire down from heaven that's a pretty powerful God and Elijah said unto them take the prophets of Baal let not one of them escape and they took them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of Kishon and slew them there and Elijah said to Ahab give thee up eat and drink for there's a sound of abundance of rain he's saying Ahab I just showed you that my God's better I killed all your prophets. Now get off your butt, go have a meal, get something to drink, because I'm going to show you where the rain's coming from. And so Ahab went up and eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. 
and cast himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look, towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There's nothing. And he said, Go up seven times. Elijah told Ahab, I'm going to show you the rain. Get on top of this mountain and I'm going to show it to you. And the king's like, I don't see nothing. He's like, Let's do it six times. You're going to see this rain. The fervent and effective prayer. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. He's saying, Look, I see a little cloud up there. That's that's something. Maybe maybe that's where it's going to come from. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heavens were black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab robe and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Well, guys, that's the video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can comment below. You can like and share. Send me an email. Make sure you guys uh, watch me in the next video. I'm going to put a couple links on the screen. The bottom right is going to be the uh, First Kings Bible Study. The top left is going to be the uh, Exodus Bible Study. And at the bottom left is going to be a video YouTube thinks you're going to like. Please make sure you guys like and comment. Tell your friends about it. Share it on social media. Share it with a friend. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great day.